So let's sing a wonderful hymn of praise. All people that on earth do dwell, sing to the Lord with cheerful voice. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
and today's collect. O oh God, you know us to be set in the midst of so many and great dangers that by reason of the frailty of our nature, we cannot always stand upright. Grant to us such strength and protection as may support us in all dangers and carry us through all temptations. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now, Julie's gone and just wheeled herself out because she's not feeling particularly brilliant at the moment, but I see Eileen's come and joined us, so hello, Eileen. The New Testament lesson is from 1 Corinthians 15. Now, I should remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you, as of the first importance, what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the Twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to someone untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace towards me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now a lovely, joyful setting of Lord, the light of your love is shining. Shine, Jesus, shine. They have great fun in the third verse, I warn you. Yeah. 
wasn't it? <laughs> Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Once, while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, pull out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked all night long but have caught nothing. Yet, if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signalled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Get away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Paul is writing to the church in Corinth. They are men and women he know well, men and women who know him well, and he reminds them of what this good news, the gospel, actually means. They've heard him preach this and preach it often. It wasn't a flying visit that he made to Corinth. He was there for several years and then he visited often. They knew what the gospel was all about, what Jesus meant to them. And the first question we have to ask ourselves is, do we? What does our faith mean to us? Many of our fellow Christians know exactly what it means to be saved and what it means to be damned. I make no apologies that here the lines are less clear cut. I believe in a loving God, a God whose love is stronger than anything, and I have to trust in that love. But I do believe that life is better when you follow Christ. I do believe that Jesus is a person I journey with, and I want people to find that love of Christ. I was born into a Christian family. Church was part of my life from week one. But I made my own commitment when I was age 16 that I was going to follow Jesus. And that's what I have sought to do. Faith has been tested, tested almost to destruction. But I'm still here and most of the time I'm still smiling. I want people to find a faith, a faith which transforms them, sustains them and through which they and we work to make this world better. I meet, I've met, individuals for whom faith has shaped them in an amazing way, as it always has. I was at a meeting of diocesan rural officers last week. Don't ask me how I've ended up on the group of rural officers, but it meant a trip to Bakewell and a meeting where there was plenty of cake, so it was a jolly good move. And it was great listening to stories of faith from across the county. Men and women who've done amazing work supporting their village communities during COVID, when the farming community has been even more isolated than those of us in the towns. I also heard about a group of Christians who have started a mountain biking church in the Hope Valley on a Sunday morning, organising rides for individuals and families, ending with a reflection a meditation as they enjoy the Peak District landscape. Well, that's very different to the sort of church that you and me are part of, and I do promise you, you will never see me in Lycra. But it's no good saying how sad it is when people never come to church. Let's help them find faith in different places and different ways. I want people to find a faith which transforms them which transforms the world and transforms society. 
You only have to look at the society we're in to see a society that struggles to make sense of it all. The mental health crisis in our children. And I'm sure that the lack of faith in our families is causing some of those problems. If our families made the effort to worship together, to pray together, to be part of church communities, then I dare to suggest that they might not have some of the problems they have now. If our communities and our schools had continued to be part of the life of their local church, to put resources into our churches and into the wider community, perhaps we would not have the breakdown that we are seeing. If our leaders recognise the importance of faith, if they hadn't spent decades turning their back on churches, just seeing faith as a problem, perhaps our society would be a more caring society. What does it say about us that on the today's date on the website it says, fourth Sunday before Lent, accession of Her Majesty the Queen Elizabeth II, 1952, food bank Sunday. Can't we do better than that? And perhaps if we in our churches hadn't been so unsure of our faith, so quiet about our faith, then we might not be where we are now. But we are here, so what can we do about it? Do not be ashamed to ask what your faith means to you. What is it that brings you to worship week after week? What do you feel when you worship? How does the fact you are a Christian affect your life Monday to Saturday? It's not always easy to put it into words or to nail it down. Faith is different for all of us, and it's not always easy to nail it down. Since I believe in a saviour who was nailed to a cross, perhaps nail it down is a suitable phrase. I may have the dog collar, but as you know, I struggle too. We had a lovely week's holiday in Northumberland, came back feeling really good. Had a lovely meal with a couple I married while we were up there and the two gorgeous children they've now adopted. Then on Tuesday morning, lateral flow tests to ensure we haven't got the virus before lunch and club. And Julie gets the one on the right, the one with two lines. She's positive. Two years of avoiding this damn virus. And now, just as we're being told it's all over, it's in the house. Anger, frustration, fear and everything else. And I have to admit, I gave God a bit of a telling off. So where is God for you? Where do you find your faith? Paul reminds his church to hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you. Christ died for our sins and our world needs forgiveness. People need forgiveness. Individuals who find life confusing, individuals who struggle, individuals who need to know God loves them. Society needs to see the power of forgiveness. It's got to be stronger than the power of hate, which seems to be in the ascendancy at the moment. Christ rose again. Love is stronger than death. I have to hang on to that and not just hang on to it, but proclaim it as the truth. We all need to proclaim the power of love and work for it. Jesus appeared to Cephas, to Peter, to the Twelve, to more than 500 brothers and sisters, <coughs> and he appeared to Paul. Paul knew the power of Christ. He has a relationship with Jesus, his friend, his saviour, his Lord. He knew that he'd started as a man who watched as Stephen was stoned to death, a man who rejoiced as Stephen died, and he knew that God had forgiven him. In the gospel, Jesus is proclaiming the word of God, word and action. But it does read as if there's some fishermen who weren't actually listening, too busy washing their nets. And I find that a bit of a comfort. Jesus gets into Simon Peter's boat, uses it to give him a base to preach from, and then sends them out to fish. But we fished all night and caught nothing which is lot, not a lot different to the church saying that we've always done it like that and it didn't work. Yet when Jesus commands, we act. They went and fished and the net was full. They get others to help because none of us fish alone. Simon cannot get his head round what has happened. I'm not sure I can cope with all this, Lord. Get away from me. 
But Jesus says, don't be afraid. I've got a job for you to do. And he says that to us. Don't be afraid. I've got a job for you. Today, we mark the accession to the throne of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth. 70 years, quite amazing. We will celebrate in June, and let's hope and pray that we can have a wonderful celebratory weekend. At St Matthew's, they're in discussion with both of the schools to produce some amazing artwork in church. And I've no doubt I set St Edmunds the challenge that we can do something splendid this side of the A38 as well. Well, let's hope and pray that we can have a wonderful celebratory weekend. I want lots of cake. And if we want an example of a woman of faith, we all know we need to look no further. Thank God for Her Majesty. This is our amazing faith, and it's summed up so well in today's post-communion prayer. Let's pray it together. Go before us, Lord, in all we do, with your most grave, gracious favour, and guide us with your continual help, that in all our works, begun, continued and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name, and finally by your mercy receive everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So let's say the creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now for our anthem, here's a lovely setting of John Bunyan's words, Who Would True Valor See? The music's by Malcolm Archer.
rather lovely, isn't it? I've come across some of Malcolm Archer's music, but hadn't come across that one before. Mary wrote some prayers for us at St Edmunds, so we'll use those prayers now. Father God, we pray for your grace to be poured onto the people of the Ukraine and for those who are working towards a peaceful outcome of the border issues with the Russian authorities. We pray also for the people of Afghanistan, particularly women and girls who are unable to access education and their right to a fulfilled life. We pray for your grace to give strength to all people suffering the effects of civil war and natural disasters. As citizens of the comfortable Western world, we owe it to our fellow people to take responsibility for the damage that we are causing to the world's climate. As individuals, we need to find little ways to reduce the impact of our prosperity, to minimise our use of plastics, to cut our carbon emissions. Lord, giver of grace, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for your grace to be poured onto those in positions of power in our own parliament and in local government. It's disappointing and disturbing when there is evidence of dishonesty, selfishness or discrimination against any group of society. We pray for all politicians to work for the common good, act with integrity and live lives based on grace, love and honesty. We pray for Her Majesty the Queen on this her accession day and ask your blessing on her and on all of us as we celebrate her platinum anniversary with our communities. Lord, giver of grace, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for your grace to be poured onto the clergy, readers and all in positions of influence in all the local churches, especially St Edmunds and St Matthews. We think about all those who are lonely, who feel unloved and who are struggling financially, emotionally or physically. We would ask for your grace for all those individuals and families who are utilising the practical support of the food bank. Help us to give willingly and generously on each first Sunday. We pray for your grace on those who are sick and we ask for your continuing love for those who have died. We pray for those who mourn and for those who still feel a hole in their lives left by the death of a loved one recently or longer ago. Lord, giver of grace, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for your grace to be poured onto all our families, the young, the old and everyone in between. Help us to understand their problems, support them appropriately and show them your love as you have shown us. Lord, giver of grace, hear our prayer. Father God, giver of grace, help us to live by the example of your son Jesus, so that we may show your grace in our thoughts, words and deeds. Help us not to act hastily, to speak unkindly, or to think any malicious thoughts. We are what we are by the grace of God, and we do not want this grace to have been in vain. In the words of today's collect, grant us such strength and protection as may support us in all dangers and carry us through all temptations. Lord, giver of grace, hear our prayer. We bring our prayers together as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And here's the prayer for the accession service in the Book of Common Prayer. It's a bit difficult to get your tongue round, but let's pray it together. Almighty God, who rulest over all the kingdoms of the world and dost order them according to thy great pleasure, we yield thee unfeigned thanks for that thou wast pleased as on this day to set thy servant, our sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth, 
upon the throne of this realm. Let thy wisdom be her guide, and let thine arm strengthen her. Let truth and justice, holiness and righteousness, peace and charity abound in her days. Direct all her counsels and endeavours to thy glory and the welfare of her subjects. Give us grace to obey her cheerfully for conscience sake, and let her always possess the hearts of her people. Let her reign be long and prosperous, and crown her with everlasting life in the world to come. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And it's obvious that our worship needs to finish with the National Anthem. grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the queen, the commonwealth and all humanity, unity, peace and concord, and to us and all God's servants, life everlasting, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. And John's going to play for us, Prelude on the Te Deum. <laughs> <laughs>